It's a highly stressful time for everyone with the COVID-19 pandemic. It's very important to manage your mental health. With the quarantine in effect, most households are very busy and it can be difficult to find time to use strategies that can help to lower your stress and preserve your mental health. Fortunately, there are activities you can do to reduce stress that take little time. Hi everyone, I'm Trevor Sullivan from Sullivan Associates Clinical Psychology. And today I'm gonna to talk about four quick ways to manage stress during the COVID-19 pandemic. Before we get started, I invite you to subscribe to this channel. And if you're on YouTube, click the alert notification. That way, when we release more videos like this, you'll get notified. We all know that an abundance of stress isn't good for our mental or physical health. And when you add stress to a pre-existing problem, it tends to make it worse. But how do you find time to use strategies to manage stress, especially if you have a partner or children at home, as I'm sure many of you do? The short answer is, set aside a little time to use strategies that work well. And I've got four strategies you can use that'll take 20 minutes or less. First strategy I encourage you to try is exercise. And the good news is, research shows that all types of exercise are effective for mental health. In a 2010 study by Dr. Matthew Herring and colleagues, they found that just 20 minutes of exercise helped to predictably reduce feelings of stress and anxiety for most people. And 30 minutes of exercise, well, it worked even better. They also found that the stress-reducing effects of exercise tend to last for many hours afterwards. So sooner the day that you can start exercising, the better. For those of you who like demanding exercise, I have good news. Studies show that the harder you work physically, the greater the impact on your mental health. So if you have a way to exercise indoors, I encourage you to make it a regular part of your daily routine at least three days a week, and ideally more. If you need to exercise outdoors, it's a little trickier with the current pandemic, especially if you want to venture outside your backyard, but it's still doable. As I'm recording this in early May, it's still possible to walk, jog, ride a bike in public, as long as you maintain at least six feet of physical distance and avoid certain public areas such as parks. And this is fortunate, because it's gonna make my next tip a little easier to do. For my next tip, I encourage you to spend time in nature. A 2019 study by Dr. Mary Hunter and colleagues found that spending as little as 20 minutes in nature is enough to lower cortisol levels, which is the main stress hormone in our bodies. And the great thing about Thunder Bay in Northwestern Ontario is that nature is all around us. So even though we may not be able to go to parks at this time, it's still easy to be in nature just by simply going outside. And for anyone who prefers or simply needs to remain indoors at this time, nature can help us to lower stress. There are studies which show that simply looking at certain aspects of nature, such as trees, birds, water, all help to lower stress. But the key ingredient for nature to work is to take time to enjoy and connect with it. So this means being present and not continuing to sneak peeks at your cell phone. Also helps to minimize talking if you choose to walk with someone. Instead, you want to direct most of your focus to simply enjoying nature. So introverts can rejoice here, but notice I didn't say no talking at all. Third, for anyone who has a dog or cat at home, I have a strategy that should make your furry friend happy while also helping to lower your stress quickly. A 2019 study by Dr. Patricia Pendry and colleagues found that petting a dog or cat for 10 minutes helps significantly reduce feelings of stress. There's even a study that found simply petting a dog for three minutes can help to increase oxytocin, which is also known as the main love hormone in our bodies. So you may be wondering, why does petting a dog or cat work so well? Well, science has uncovered all kinds of reasons. People tend to find pets calming and supportive, particularly in a crisis or when they're upset. It also helps that your pets are non-judgmental and usually great listeners, which gives them a pretty distinct advantage over humans. Not to mention, for anyone who's a pet owner, you've probably noticed your pet can sense when you're upset and they're more likely to sit close to you to provide support. And for anyone who has a child or teen, It'd be a great idea to encourage them to take a little bit of time to spend petting the family dog or cat. Not only for the reasons I just mentioned, but I have a fun fact for you here. There's a recent study showing that children tend to like their family pets more than their siblings. So this could be a great way to help one of your children lower their stress level while also getting a break from an aggravating sibling during the quarantine. And for my fourth and final tip, I'd suggest spending a little bit of time practicing mindfulness. If you're not familiar with mindfulness, it's a highly effective way to quickly relax the mind and body. A 2017 study by Dr. Mengren Zhu and colleagues found that just 10 minutes of mindfulness was enough to get people to stop worrying about internal thoughts and focus on being in the present moment. And if you need a little more convincing to try mindfulness, 
A 2014 study by Dr. David Creswell and colleagues found that just 75 minutes of mindfulness spread out over three days was effective at helping people to manage their reaction to a stressful event. And certainly the COVID-19 pandemic qualifies as the ultimate stressful event. And more good news from this study. Short periods of mindfulness seem to work best for people who aren't naturally mindful, which to be fair is probably most of us. So if you're interested in trying mindfulness, there are four key steps to follow. First, it's important for your body to be in a relaxed position. It doesn't matter if you're sitting, standing, or moving, but you need to be comfortable. Second, focus on taking slow, deep breaths from your stomach. Third, you need something to focus your attention on. It could be your breathing, a picture on a wall if you're sitting, or even focusing on treetops if you're outside walking. Fourth, you want to allow thoughts to come naturally, but the goal is not to engage or judge them in any way. Instead, you want to treat your thoughts as thought bubbles. They're just floating around, and you don't need to bother with for a little while. So I encourage you to take a little time each day, try at least one of these four strategies, and make managing your mental health an important part of your daily routine. If you need help implementing these strategies, please contact us at Sullivan Associates Clinical Psychology. If you enjoyed this video, like it, share it, leave a comment. Thank you for watching.